I was around 10 years old when I first stepped foot into a police detachment to give my statement as to the grooming and sexual abuse I had been experiencing up until that point. He was arrested, he confessed to everything, and he was convicted. To say that this didn't shape my life to some extent would be a lie. I knew from a very young age that I wanted to do whatever I could to help protect children from experiencing the same trauma I had. It's what led me to becoming a police officer with the RCMP with the goal of one day working in preventing child sexual abuse. Because of this, I took specific training on how to profile and interview child sex offenders. This includes those who are pedophiles and those who aren't. During this training, we studied numerous case study, watch interviews with offenders, watch undercover operation and rescue mission, just like the one that was featured in the recently released movie, Sound of Freedom. We learn how child sex offenders think, how they behave, and what we can expect of them. We learn about the history of pedophilia and their past attempt at actually normalizing pedophilia into society. We learned about their logos, code language, anything and everything that could be considered relevant to an investigation, including what to look for in a search warrant. One of the organizations we learned about the most was the North American Man-Boy Love Association, also known as NAMBLA. They are the biggest known pedophile activist organization in the world. Due to police infiltration, which led to hundreds of arrests, the group doesn't actually meet anymore. However, this doesn't mean that they aren't still active. NAMBLA itself has an interesting history. Its founder was a known gay activist and socialist, and from its early conception, the organization was a part of what is now known as the LGBTQ community. They even took part in early days of pride parades. Their involvement into the International Lesbian and Gay Association led to them being kicked out of the UN. Shortly after, NAMBLA was kicked out and removed from the greater LGBTQ community. However, many within the community still believe they belong. An example of this would be Gail Rubin, who wrote the founding document of what is now known as queer theory. This is the exact document that's behind the gender ideology that's coming into our schools. This founding document is littered with pro-pedophilia language. In fact, this right here is Gail's exact words. It is harder for most people to sympathize with actual boy lovers. Like communists and homosexuals in the 1950s, boy lovers are so stigmatized that it is difficult to find defenders for their civil liberties, let alone for their erotic orientation. I'll be speaking more about this subject, queer theory, as well as Soji in a future episode. So all this to say, Pedophiles have a history of infiltrating the LGBTQ movement, or what is now known as the 2SLGBTQIA plus movement. In fact, this is listed as one of NAMBLA's main goals, to infiltrate the LGBTQ movement in hopes to one day normalize pedophilia into society. In this release FBI declassified document, it says the following about the NAMBLA organization and its goals and mission. Here's eight that's listed in that document. End the oppression of pedophiles from having what they consider consensual relationship. Build support networks for pedophiles. Educate the public on how sex between adults and kids is good and doesn't hurt them. Work with the LGBTQ movement and anyone who fights for sexual liberation. Free people of all ages from sexual prejudice and oppression. Support the rights of all people, including kids, to choose who they have sex with. Get young people to rebel against anti-sexual restrictions and push back against those who impose them. So adults, parents, police, moral crusaders, the church, and government authorities. Last one. Lower the age of consent and change legislation that are against the freedom of youth. Now, why am I talking about this? Well. We know that child sexual abuse hasn't gone away. In fact, it's even more prominent now than it was then. While NAMBLA doesn't recruit anymore or do their work openly on the public square as NAMBLA, that doesn't mean they aren't still very much active. So 
Now we have to ask ourselves, where in society have we noticed this specific kind of activism? It doesn't take long to start seeing a few red flags. I'm going to point you to a recent incident that occurred in Lumsden, Saskatchewan in Canada, where Planned Parenthood presenters exposed grade 9 class to sexually explicit content. It included A to Z sex cards as well as a booklet that was sent home with kits. Now, I can use the term sexually explicit content, but some of you are probably going to roll your eyes thinking it's likely not that bad. But I'm going to read out one of the cards for you because you can't possibly imagine how bad it is unless I do read it. I've changed two words in it for you so that I could air this publicly. This card was for the letter F and includes a word that rhymes with belching. The act of sucking milk from your partner's backside chocolate donut, as if milk didn't taste good enough already. Nothing says lovin' like milk fresh from the oven. If you're going to chow down on some chocolate donut marinated milk, just know that you and your partner are at high risk for HIV and STIs. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, the flyer sent home with kids had just as much concerning material. It talked about urinating on each other, defecating on each other, as well as fisting. Yeah, you heard that right. They thought it was appropriate to teach a grade 9 class about fisting. It also included the exact words, drug can heighten sexual pleasure, which an assumption could be made that this could lead to encouraging children to try it. You can hear directly from parents as to what happened by listening to my Twitter space, which aired July 26, 2023. It's going to be posted on the same channel as you are viewing this video, as well as to my Twitter profile, Nadine Gines, for the next two weeks. Following rightful public outrage, Minister of Education Dustin Duncan made a ministerial directive essentially banning Planned Parenthood and their affiliated organization from presenting in the classrooms for the time being. We'll get into the affiliated organizations later on in this video. After this move by the minister, and after complaints being filed with the police over this incident, Planned Parenthood made this statement. They didn't apologize to the students or parents, but instead apologized for the situation they placed the school in. The story put forth in the statement is not truthful to what actually occurred, or as described by the students and parents. This statement also didn't match the response they had with the concerned parents who called them the day following the incident. The parent described Planned Parenthood gloating about exposing kids to these cards and flyers. You can also hear about this on the Twitter space posting alongside with this video. I have to add, this incident is also not a one-off incident. We uncovered shortly after that these cards and pamphlets have made their way into many other schools across Canada. Now, these actions, the bragging, the lack of accountability, certain keywords used by Planned Parenthood really did raise alarm bells in my head based on my past personal experience and professional experience. So I decided to go digging into these organizations and their affiliated partners. I found some very concerning things that I feel is crucial for parents and the public to know. Planned Parenthood, also known as Action Canada, works closely with other key organizations like Wisdom to Action and not just the tip.ca, as well as the Canadian Centre for Gender and Sexual Diversity. These organizations are provincially and federally funded, so they're paid for by your very own tax dollars. All of these organizations have plans and advocate for a complete overhaul of the current sexual education curriculum that we currently have in Canada. They consider the current sex ed program to be a shame-based program and want to change it to what they call a pleasure-based sexual education program. You can see an example of this pleasure-based sexual education program here. A Twitter follower sent me a secretly recorded presentation that describes this new type of sex ed as well as what they consider the bad part of the current sexual education program. This presentation was being led by trans activist Faye Johnstone. If that name sounds familiar, it's because Faye has been involved in a few recent controversy. 
one of them being the Hershey campaign controversy, as well as Faye being chosen to be the keynote speaker at the YWCA Women of Distinction Award. I'll post a few clips of this audio in a separate video for those who want to go listen to it for themselves. This new sexual education teaches that everything's okay and nothing's off limit, as long as it brings you pleasure. This fits right in with the sex cards and the flyer I talked about earlier. In the same audio, they explain on how they plan on bringing these changes to sexual education. The plan is to lean on teachers and third-party organizations by providing assistance, training, and resources for free, instead of getting it done through the proper channels, which is the curriculum. They even mock government officials who have pushed back on this. They essentially plan on bypassing government and parents. They also warn about pushback from parents and how it can sometimes take just one parent to derail the entire thing. Now to the most concerning thing of all, the Canadian Centre for Gender and Sexual Diversity. I was absolutely horrified by what I saw when I got on their website's main page. Remember earlier when I mentioned about being trained to look for specific things when conducting an investigation or a search warrant on child sex offenders? These logos are the logos that I was trained to look for. Now, why are these logos important? It's not like pedophiles can go out there and broadcast who they are. So these logos are one of the ways that they use to identify each other and others who support them. Now, this is the website for the federally funded Canadian Centre for Gender and Sexual Diversity and the logo is right next to it. There's a possibility whoever created this website or runs the organization has no clue what they are projecting, but the fact that there's two of them right on their main page makes that even harder to believe. Even if they don't know, the fact that they are there sends a strong message to pedophiles that they are allies to their community and could it in fact mean that some of them have infiltrated the organization. Now, I'm not saying that all these organizations are run by pedophiles. However, when you start looking at the history, the goals and mission of pedophile activists, like the ones in NAMBLA, it raises a lot of red flags that I don't believe we should continue to ignore. Again, here are the bullet points I talked about earlier directly from the FBI report. Now, looking at these bullet points, these activist-led group appears to want to remove any limitations to sexual activity, just like Nambla did. They constantly promote that children can decide for themselves what to do with their own body through this new gender ideology, and it's going younger and younger by the day. They are pushing for pleasure-based sexual education, which in essence means if it physically feels good, it is good. This is the same mindset that Nambla uses to define what they consider man-boy love, consensual. They have logos that basically advertise that they are allies for the pedophile community. And Nambla openly stated that their goal was to cooperate with the LGBTQ community, so it shouldn't be surprising that they are the primary target and could in fact have infiltrated the movement just like they did in the past. We're seeing constant attempts at pushing the limits of exposing kids to sexually explicit contents. They attack and are against any groups or adults who push back on sexualization of children, so parents, moral crusaders, the church, and any other governing authority. Even though I'm against these organizations coming into our schools to teach sexual education, I'm not against all type of sexual education as the extreme left will lead you to believe. I'm personally in favor of sexual education which promotes healthy relationship, healthy boundaries, consent, reducing the rate of teen pregnancy as well as STIs, while also being geared towards detecting and lowering the risk of child sexual abuse. That's why I'll continue to advocate and lobby for having a Canadian version of Erin Mearns Law implemented in Canada like it has in most of the states. Its main purpose is helping detect and prevent child sexual abuse, and I believe it to be a necessary step in the right direction. I'll be speaking more specifically on this subject on a future episode. This video is for people from within the community and outside the community to band together to end the sexualization and confusion of our children.
Acceptance of the LGBTQ is in decline for the first time in years. Allowing this to continue is only going to make that worse. We need your help now more than ever. These are questions you can start asking these organizations. Why the focus on kids? Why these logos? Demand that they be changed and that pedophilia be publicly denounced, as well as the behaviors linked to normalizing it. Demand that they stop isolating kids by teaching them to fear their families and keep secrets from them. We need you to push back just like the community did in the past. There are many groups from within the community who oppose this. Many have already reached out to me. In fact, this video might have even been shared by one of them. Join these groups. Be bold and courageous and voice your concerns. Now, for everyone, you're likely wondering what to do next. Well, you can start by sharing this video with everyone you know. We need to raise awareness as much as possible to where this is leading society. Reach out to your elected official, whether it be municipal, provincial, or federal. You may be thinking that someone else is going to do it so you don't have to, but I can assure you that that mindset is exactly why we are in this situation. Start getting involved politically, at all levels, especially at school boards. Did you know that most school board trustees get in by acclamation, which means they get in because no one else runs against them? This needs to change. We need more parents on school board, not just retired school staff or administrators, or even more recently, activists. And if you're a school board trustee, you need to start speaking up. The middle ground seems to have been completely lost and the majority voice silence because everyone's so afraid of going against this woke ideology. This is the first episode of a series where I'll be tackling the sexualization of children, a subject way too many people are afraid to talk about. This will include on how to protect children in your home and in your community. And yes, that also includes abuse in the church, a problem so many are so afraid to address. So to hear more of this, follow me on Twitter, on YouTube, Facebook, and Rumble, wherever I post. An organization that would be good to follow is Unified Grassroots, an organization that I am one of the founders and president of. You can do so by going to our website, unifiedgrassroots.com, and subscribing to our email. Or you can also search us on Facebook under the same name, Unified Grassroots. Lastly, if you plan on attacking me for making this video, just know that you're going to further prove my point and message. Your attempts at canceling me and silencing me will not sway me for standing up for what is right. I'm going to continue to expose those who are trying to sexualize our kids and or normalize pedophilia. I'm a product of child sexual abuse, and because of this, I refuse to be silent. When God tells you what to do, you cannot hesitate.